attention, please. On the 11th of March 2011, a devastating 9.1 magnitude earthquake struck the Tohoku region in Japan, causing a massive tsunami reaching heights of over 40 meters in some areas, claiming around 20,000 lives. To add fuel to the fire, the tsunami caused the meltdown of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, releasing toxic radioactive chemicals into coastal regions of Fukushima Prefecture. As a result, the Jobon Line which runs along the Pacific Ocean has been vastly affected. Thirteen years later, how has the situation changed around the worst hit areas affected by the nuclear disaster? Has life along the Jobon Line fully returned to normal? I am now at Iwaki, a coastal city located in southern Fukushima Prefecture. Iwaki Station is located 209.4 kilometers from the official starting point of the Jobon Line at Nipuri in Tokyo, a crucial trunk line connecting coastal cities from Tokyo all the way to Sendai in Miyagi Prefecture. Hourly limited express trains connect Iwaki to the capital, emphasizing the importance of this city. To venture further north into Fukushima Prefecture, we have to change to a local service operated by conductorless, or one-man, E531 series trains. To keep the warmth inside the train during the harsh winters in northeastern Japan, door controls are manual in nature. This train service operates all the way to Haranamachi in the northern part of Fukushima Prefecture, about 1 hour and 20 minutes away. The route passes through some areas within the exclusion zone that have yet to be fully decontaminated, as well as other towns that have started welcoming back residents in recent years after the disaster. Twenty minutes later, we depart Hirono Station. The scenery rapidly changes to feature many modern-looking buildings that appear to be recently built, highlighting the reconstruction efforts in the area. The section of the line past this station only reopened on the 1st of June 2014, some three years after the tsunami. As we venture further north, we can see two unusual towers, raising some questions. As the train arrives and departs Kido Station 15 kilometers away from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, we can see a hotel right outside the station. Through the power of Google Street View, if we time travel back to 2013, you can see the decontamination efforts in the area from reading the signs and the sea of black trash bags. At that time, the plot of land where the hotel now stands was a warehouse that seems to be damaged, showing how severe the situation was considering this town was at a considerable distance from the plant. The station at the point of time has not been reopened yet, and the town seems eerily quiet, showing the impact and hardships faced by local residents. The hotel was only built in recent years. We now depart from Totsuta Station, 10 kilometers away from the plant. The portion of the line to Tomioka, the next station along the line, resumed on the 21st of September 2017, some three years later. Reconstruction and decontamination work becomes more apparent, with many families recently returning back and constructing new homes. As the line travels along the coast of the Pacific Ocean nearing Tomioka Station, high seawalls can be seen. This emphasizes the severity of the tsunami back in 2011, and it's reassuring that the Japanese government is protecting the residents of the area against disasters. Leaving Tomioka Station, the train heads even closer towards the nuclear plant. This section of the rail line was the last to be reopened, on the 14th of March 2020 all the way up to Namie, finally allowing through services from Tokyo to Sendai to resume it.
More importantly, residents of the area finally had access to the railway once again, potentially also luring more residents to return to their homes. We soon arrive at Ono Station, located just a mere four kilometers away from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Pulling into the station, tons of barriers can be seen highlighting the decontamination efforts in the area. No one alights from this train at this station, probably since residents have yet to return to this portion of Okuma town, one of the worst hit municipalities in Japan affected by the nuclear disaster. The station was reopened on the 14th of March 2020, explaining the modern design. It consists of a singular side platform, however there seems to be remnants of another track on the other side with a fence, showing that it used to be island platform. Walking up the stairs towards the exit, we firstly notice a meter measuring the amount of radiation in the area. In the station's waiting room, there is an interactive display panel which provides information about weather and radiation levels. Clicking on the map and zooming into the area surrounding the station, we can see the radiation doses. Surprisingly, it seems that the radiation at the nuclear plant is considerably lower than surrounding areas. Keying in the duration you are in the area, you can run a simulator that calculates the amount of radiation you are taking in. Radiation levels are perfectly safe here, so there isn't a need to worry. Below the meter, an evacuation map is placed to display the evacuation route in case a tsunami occurs. The evacuation point is 70 minutes away, which in my opinion is a bit unsettling. A display which shows train timetables and locations using JR East's Doko train platform is certainly valued, considering the low train frequencies here. The station has been elegantly renovated and we can see the progress of the decontamination works around the station. Interestingly, there are even gachapan machines as well as a cartoon bear seemingly providing directions to a parking lot at the east exit. Exiting the station, there is no one in sight. It is certainly heartbreaking to see an empty car park along with ruins of abandoned buildings and structures scattered around the station. Unfortunately, it is likely that this area has yet to be fully decontaminated, as only some roads were accessible and all the private property around the area was cordoned off from the public. Furthermore, barriers cordoned off roads that have yet to be decontaminated, with a poster suggesting alternative routes. The overgrown vegetation in the car park suggests how long it has been since the area has been last inhabited, with a sign prohibiting parking put up by Tokyo Dinryoku, Tokyo Electric Power Company, who used to operate the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, highlighting the sad reality of Okuma town. However, we did see a newly built building in the town with a car parked next to it, hinting at a possibility of a revival of the town in the near future. Walking along the main road to get a bird's eye view of the station, we can see many cranes and construction work in full swing on the west side of the station. Cutting through the station building to get to the other side, we can hear the incessant noise of drilling machinery as the lift door opens. towards the road, a preserved welcome to Okuma sign which was likely kept to remind future generations about the tragedy that occurred 13 years ago. Fairly interestingly, the radiation levels are actually lower here. 
The perfectly safe reading of 0.183 microsieverts per hour is actually not far off from Singapore's 0.14 microsieverts per hour, showing that the decontamination efforts are indeed making significant progress. Having seen the devastating consequences of the nuclear accident that happened 13 years ago, we cannot forget the tragedy that clearly impacted the lives of countless people in Fukushima Prefecture. On the other hand, it is indeed heartening to see the extensive efforts the Japanese government has undertaken to attempt to reinstate not just the Jobon Line, but the coast of Fukushima Prefecture to its original state which undoubtedly involved a lot of resources. Hopefully, these measures will entice more people to return to their hometowns to revive the stagnant local economies, bringing the area back to its former glory.